Good morning, guys. Happy Tuesday. And it is time to do some more work with math and decimals. So chapter 11, we're going to actually be doing two pages today. And I think you guys can handle it. We're going to be doing 11.2 and 11.3. And they're very similar. So if you remember yesterday, we talked about decimals and how on the left side of the decimal, it is the whole numbers. It stands for those large giants, um, the big holes. And on the right side of the decimal is our fractions, our parts, the things that are divided up into tiny parts. I also told you about the tenths place and the hundredths place. I gave you a little bit of a hint. The tenths is when you divide one whole into 10 parts and the hundredths, obviously, into 100 parts. I gave you another little hint that I like to remember or remind myself of when I think of decimals. The tenths place reminds me of um, a dime because if you divided up a dollar, one whole dollar, it would be in 10 equal parts or 10 cents, a dime. If you divided up a dollar into a hundred parts, it's my favorite coin, um, a penny. So a hundred pennies would equal one single dollar, okay? So let's take a look especially at the tenths place first, okay? Let me remind you it's 10 parts. Um, I'm gonna give you a model here. This is 10 sections and only one of them is um, shaded in. And then also, if you took a look at the fraction form of tenths, it would be blank out of 10. The bottom number would always be 10 because that's how many parts you're dividing it in. That's the total, total parts. So if I were to fill in some of these numbers, let's say, for example, the number one. If I put the number one in the tenths place and I had zero in the ones place and a one in the tenths place, it would be written out like 0 0.1. The one is in the tenths place. The model would look like this. One out of 10 is shaded and my fraction would be one out of 10. Okay, one tenth. Let's change the number up. Let's do a three three tenths. So if I wrote this out in decimal form, it would look like 0 0.3. We like to put that zero there. It gives more of a place value of where your decimal point is. So there's no holes, decimal point, three tenths. Here's the model and what it would look like. Three are shaded out of 10 and our fraction is three tenths. This is all different forms of showing fractions or parts of a whole. Let's do one more, seven tenths. So we would write it 0 0.7. The seven would stay in that tenths place value. Our model shows us seven squares or rectangles are shaded out of 10, seven out of 10. And our fraction looks like this, seven tenths. Hopefully this is pretty simple to you. Um, whatever number you see, you put in the tenths place or you put on top of the fraction seven over 10, okay? Um, let's move on to the next page because the next page has to do with your hundredths place, the penny place. And in this place, now we're talking about a hundred different sections that have been divided up. So not just 10 parts, but now we've got 100. And I've got 100 cube up there to help you give you a reference of what 100 different pieces look like. Also, if we were to write it in our fraction form, it would be blank or how, whatever number we choose over 100. Okay, the bottom number is going to be 100 and it's going to stay 100 because we have divided it into 100 parts. So let's do a few examples here because at the very end, there's gonna be a little bit of a trick here that you really need to remember. Let's take, for example, 38 hundredths, okay? We got three tens, we have eight in the hundredths place, so we would pronounce it 38 hundredths. If we wrote it out, it would be 0 0.38, 0 0.38. 38, it, very, it looks a lot like 38 cents here, guys. So if you think of money, it might help you out here. 
I shaded 38 squares. You can see three full lines, 10, 20, 30, and then eight more squares on top of that. So there's a total of 38 out of 100 that are shaded. And my fraction looks like this, 38 hundredths. So I've got the number 0 0.38, 38, and 38 over 100, okay? Let's do another one. Now I'm going to do 95, that's a lot, okay? 0.95 would be 95 hundredths, and you would write out 95 hundredths, 0 0.95. If I were to shade in my boxes, look at all the boxes I've had to shade there. I shaded in nine rows of 10, that's 90, and then five up on the top, which would equal 95. And my fraction would simply look like 95 over 100. I hope this is all making sense. Um, here's my last little curveball that I wanna throw to you. What if, I only have seven hundredths, seven pennies, okay? It's not very much. And I actually have no tenths. I have zero tenths. So the, the way you would write this number is 0 0.07. The model looks like this, seven squares. I don't even have a full row colored, only seven squares. And my fraction is seven out of a hundred, okay? Here's the curveball. This zero, there are in a zero tenths, but if I don't have a zero here and I don't keep my placeholder of a zero here, my seven would slide over and it would look like seven tenths instead of seven hundredths. The reality is there is no tenths at all. So you need that zero there and you also need the zero here when you write out your number. 0 0.07. That stands for seven hundredths. I know that some of you might get confused by this whole zero in the tenths place, but it only happens when you have a single digit and you're talking about the hundredths place. You need that zero there to hold your place value in the tenths place. So good luck on your work pages, multiple pages today. If you have any questions, please save your questions for me. Ask me on Zoom. Um, I will be here from 1 to 3. Just email me and let me know what your questions are. Good luck.